little bit darker here. Now I can kind of suggest where the shadow is. Oh, nice. See? And I'm only doing this with just one brush, right? It's only one brush that I'm using for this. You don't need to change brushes and one color only. Today, I'm going to guide you through the essentials of, of painting a, a beautiful beach scene using a very limited palette of just two colors plus the background. This was a class that we had in St. Augustine Beach recently. Uh, I am going to break down the process in three basic steps, which is the foundation, which is the drawing phase, and focusing on capturing the shapes, the relationships between the rocks and the waves. Then we're gonna go into a value study using shadows and midtones. That way you will be able to create more depth in your painting. And finally, we'll make it pop. We'll add some highlights strategically so we can bring the beach scene to life. And all of this in, I think you can do it in 15 minutes maybe 10 depending on the complexity but it will give you a quick foundation so you can get started and not suffer from paralysis by analysis i hope you find this lesson valuable especially for all of you that are beginners into plein air thing i'm gonna put is my horizon remember the horizon is always at the line of your eye right so here's my horizon i'm gonna establish that's the first thing i'm gonna do so you're just mixing raw umber. Just raw umber right now. And and the and uh, and you see turpentine. That, I mean, turpentine yeah. You can move things around. Like this big rock right here, that's gonna be my my focus uh, point here. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Right? Not perfect, right? But I'm just drawing with the brush. Here's some rock here. And I know that I want the foam to do this thing. Maybe the water will be here. Okay, so I'll put some rock here. So there's no distinction between the rocks and the other stuff you're doing right now? Like, because you're just drawing it. Right, I'm just drawing. I'm just placing the uh, objects. And I'm not even putting shadows. I, this is just my composition, what I want. I'm using this as reference. If, let's say as a reference photo. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's more like what I want to, the, feel, the feeling that I want to convey. Okay, so. So here the rocks go over here, and then they go over here, and then Sorry. some rocks here. And if you notice, this is already dry, so it absorbs. So what's good about it is that you can paint on top, and you're not, it's not gonna uh, disappear. It's always gonna mix with your paint, and that's why you want a, an absorbent surface, right? That's, that's why what, we use the marble powder. That's why we use the marble powder, so it absorbs. And you can, so you can start, you know, do your underpainting. And then start painting right away. So I kind of like what I see here. You know, it's like when you're doing plein air, it's like you want to put everything in it, right? Yeah. You know? yeah, <laughs> you, it so you, yeah, but it, there's so much, you know. So, so but right now I'm just gonna focus on the rocks here. Maybe I'll just paint this. Uh, and maybe, maybe I'll bring some of the sand. This is very close to the horizon, so maybe I'll bring some of the sand. Here. Maybe build more. So this is all gonna be this sand right here. Or rock. Maybe I'm gonna make the rocks a little bit bigger. Then this is a good time to decide if you wanna erase something. Let's say you can go ahead and you say maybe we have those erases. This is like it's to, to evaporate. So you can still. So let's say I want it to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll make it rock really big. Maybe I'll have some less of it. There's a lot of rocks here and everything trails this way. And here's this fan. This has fun. I mean, I like the, the foam yet it's quiet. This style, these lines here, they go this way. So let me ask you a question. Yes. Okay. So you're saying this is sand here. This is the sand that I see here. This is the rocks. These are the rocks. And what is this ocean? This is the uh, the line of the foam. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It's compressing the picture. Right. Okay. So I'm putting everything tighter together, right? I know. I like all of the elements. All right. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do value studies. So for my value study, I know that. If I need a reference for a rock, I just look and glance and see how they do. So, what if you can't draw a rock from memory, like you can? Well, I'm not drawing it from memory. I, I like I have it in front of me. Just it's just that I'm not. I'm choosing to pick just a few. I'm not picking every single. That's my problem. I'm a copier. Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you start like when you're in plain air, you want to put everything in the even the little birds and. And this is when, when you're out there outside, you only have what three hours or two hours. So just get the details, get your composition, and get your values and colors. And then you can finish it at home. So you don't you have to finish, or you can come back another day. It's good. All right. So I'm not gonna put the phone in, but I don't I'm kind of suggesting it here. So I have this thing going. I kind of like. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. All right. And let's paint my ocean. To be down up, just get this spot and just dark in the ocean. Try to get them to rise and straight. Doesn't have to be pestered. And turpentine evaporates quickly when you, you know, I use it in plain air. I I don't use it much at home unless I have a well ventilator. Yeah, because right. it's, it stinks. Uh, Wait, how are you doing the highlights? So I change brushes because I like to have my light colors on one brush, okay. dark colors on the other brush. Now, so my highlights, I'm squinting them. My highlights are going to be on the waves, right? So, same thing. So you make this little liquidy with white. And oh my god. See how bright they are? They yeah. And the other thing, this is going to be. Ah, 
gets him to clean the rock. Look at all that beautiful stuff. You can really appreciate why you do the darker canvas. Yeah. Right? So now when you the, when you have a darker a darker canvas, you can you can use your white and you can really see it. And that's why you need to tone it. Especially when you're painting. But I don't want this white to be very impasto. I don't want a lot of paint. I just want to suggest and and if I squint I think the sand it's just a little bit darker than the fire. So maybe it'll be Now we've seen raw umber and Yeah, a little bit of what I had there, raw umber with some white. Because this sand cannot be as light as foam, right? But it's lighter than the rock. that you guys should do it before you start take a picture from the composition what you want to achieve but now no, I've seen some planner artists and they have their phone right next to them and they're painting their phone don't do that don't okay do that. there's a reason why you're out here right so again here here's the sand there it's sand so you have to be very careful to not make it too white don't tell us what you look over there. All right. Is that a good stopping point? I think so. I think that's a good stopping point. 